Greetings, my name is Neo Second, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Corpse Party Book of Shadows. In the last episode, I managed to complete Chapter 4, Purgatory, and, well... Didn't learn much of anything new that I didn't already know from Blood Covered in that chapter. Except for uh, a little bit of what Naho's personality was like before she basically went completely over the edge. And we got to uh, learn about uh, her friend, Saika, who she basically used as an unwitting pawn to get into Heavenly Host. And the unfortunate demise that awaited her shortly after she arrived there. So, all around, just basically a little more, a more detailed retelling of a tragedy that would just serve to spark another set of tragedies as time would go on. So, that's pretty much it, really. There was only, like, a couple wrong ends I had to get there, too, and I was pretty much able to uh, get that done in the last episode. So, after I completed Chapter 4, we now have Chapter 5, Shangri-La. I, I think that's how it's pronounced. And, well... I have, uh, as usual, I have no idea what's gonna what's gonna happen here with, with this chapter here and how it's going to re relate to the uh, overall narrative. But uh, you're just hoping that uh, it uh, provides some uh, very interesting exposition that we haven't seen yet at all. So let's just go ahead and get this started. Hey, Morishigi. I deserve punishment for my actions. Well, which actions are those? Kaitai's camera was flashed when the door was opened. Each time I took a photograph of my phone, its flash made the school walls shine a bright, heavenly white. Oh. That. This was a place of solitude. Only she and I. Not another soul to be found. I just. can't stay away. Oh, yikes! I was acutely aware that the hand in which I held my cell phone had begun sweating. My breathing had become uncomfortably heavy. I was getting steadily more excited. And it was all because of her. A perfect flower brightly adorning the wall with its myriad colors. Such was the departed female form spread before me. You are a truly unfortunate individual, Morishigi. When I first encountered her, it took me several moments just to comprehend what I was seeing. I never beheld a person with such grievous injuries before. I'm not even certain the word injuries would apply in a situation like this. I don't think it would. What state of mind could cause someone to do this to another human being? I was certain this action had been wrought by human hands, largely because both of her arms had been nailed to the wall with construction-grade linchpins. Based solely on the dugout abdomen, seemingly without the use of tools, the intestines lying on the floor, the smashed eyeballs and the exposed jaw, one might think she'd been torn apart by wild animals. But the linchpins and the faint traces of bloody handprints here and there proved otherwise. Daga. Daga, 
。これには誰かの意志が、情熱が宿っているじゃないか。And yet, this bold, finely crafted display of her body shows a clear will and a fiery passion on part of the orchestrator. You, you, take, the, you take the trope of nightmare fetishist to a pretty high level. Just saying. The blood that, that, spattered, that splattered, excuse me, far and wide, shone on in my flash like a bright red flame, and whole chunks of flesh were strewn about like flower petals. This flayed, viscerated corpse with arms outstretched and nailed to the wall brought to mind images of Jesus nailed, across, nailed to the cross. But even she was purer than that. There was no self sacrifice here. No lesson to be taught. Whoever did this clearly had fun with it. They enjoyed killing her. They enjoyed destroying her. Tashkani dobuts no nakaniwa, ku tame de naku, asobi no tamini, hokano dobuts o koroshi, shita yo hoch suru mono mo ire. I suppose there are animals who kill not for food but for sport, leaving the carcasses of their prey behind. Astute observation, Morishigi. In fact, I would prefer if you stopped making said observation. Lion or Sari or Iruka, no yoni, shakai sei no takai doubts no mure dewa, sabets ya gyaktai mo aru. Of course, even intelligent animals like the lion, monkey, and dolphin can be subject to occasional exclusionism, exclusionism and abuse within their ranks. Daga, so you tashai no kogek shodo o sakhin ni made takamerare no wa, ningen dake da. Yet only humans possess the capacity to turn their violent impulses into art. <sighs> Can that truly be all there is to it, though? What more could there possibly be? It's just this is just pure sadism. I think any anybody with half a brain could see that. My internal monologue had become a soliloquy, if only for a moment. What was it about this girl that fascinated me so? What is it about every other corpse that you find and been taking pictures of that fascinates you so? Witnessing the aftermath of a murderer's actions did provide a certain freeing sense of childlike helplessness, to be sure. But why had she, in particular, stricken my fancy? This was a party gathering place. The bones of the dead were scattered anywhere. But why did this whole this whole school is like a veritable corpse party? Title drop. I've seen so many other bodies since I've arrived here, but none like hers. The moment I first laid eyes on her will stay with me always. Not just the sight, but the smell too, hanging in the air like steam after a hot bath. Seriously, your purple frost descriptions of this is really not helping anything. It's making me squeamish. She was young, junior or senior high age. But、well, that's about all I could determine. Her uniform was tattered and soaked through with blood, and there was no student ID name tag to be found. The only reason I believed her to be a she, in fact, was due to the presence of a makeup bag and ornate tortoiseshell jewelry box on the ground nearby. Oh, really? You spent all this time examining the. Her form, as you like, her form, as it will, and you don't notice any other、uh, physical characteristics that would denote her as being female. I think you're focusing too much on the gore and viscera. Viscera. I don't have the slightest clue who she may be. So why am I so drawn to her? You know, 
Considering how Mayu died in Chapter Two, at first I was at first I, you know, at first I was thinking, was this Mayu's corpse that we were that we're looking at right here? But then I don't remember. But then uh, that's when I thought, no, her uniform doesn't seem to quite match up here with Mayu's, especially uh, especially her top. She uh, wore a full. Uh, she wore, uh, excuse me. She wore a f a uh, full sleeved uh, shirt. A shirt with a, s a full sleeved yellow shirt here. Here, this woman's just wearing a tank top. So I don't know. Could just be an undershirt that Mayu was wearing for all we knew. For all we knew, but I am a little skeptical that this is actually Mayu that we're looking at. Oshiteku. Even if the injuries, that, even if the wounds that were inflicted on here, her would pretty much match up with what happened to her. Please tell me, who are you? The alarm on my cell phone sounded, as if in answer. Oh dear, is it already this late? A production of *The Barber of Seville* was airing on the a on the MHK Educational Network that evening, and Mayu had asked me to record it for her. Being away from my TV at the time, I'd set a few reminder alarms on my phone to sound at regular intervals beforehand. Mayu was most renowned for her love of sweets and accessories, and such. And I often wondered if anyone else knew how much she enjoyed the works of Rossini. I need to find Mayu. She's lost without me. Ah, bright and beautiful Mayu, beloved by all who knew her. I was the only one aware of the weaknesses that lay within her heart. Therefore, I was the only one who could truly protect her. So, Speaking of weaknesses, I wonder what's become of Mochida's little sister. Does this taking place right after? You, you got fleece from you in chapter three of uh, Blood Covered. <laughs> I certainly enjoyed chasing her around earlier. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I gave her quite a fright. You pull off the four eyes to zero soul look with flying colors, Morishigi. I just wanted to put that out there. Shame that it's it's almost a shame that it, that the worst that you really do is just get off to dead to uh, dead mutilated corpses lying around, because I'm pretty sure that if you were like I don't know Kizumi levels of homicidally insane. You would probably be a bit terrifying in your own right. Although not pro although probably nowhere near as hammy or entertaining to watch as keys in me. So, second fiddle at best. I adored watching her run for dear life. It was an act befitting a psychopathic pedophile. Yet am I no yet I am no such thing. Why, then, did I glean such joy from it? I simply found her frail, cowering countenance to be irresistibly precious. You're not the only one. Gizumi can attest to that. The sight of an overwhelmingly weak person standing before me, utterly helpless and alone, elated by my very soul. Sorry, elated my very soul. Actually, you know, now I'm remembering that one extra chapter in Blood Covered where you and Kizumi uh, briefly meet, 
and have a tense conversation with each other. And given your little uh, inner monologue here, I'm starting to think that Kizumi might actually have been uh, right about you a little bit here as far as you and him being cut from a similar cloth. If uh, the joy that you take from Yuka's fear and uh, suffering is any indication here. The sensation was nearly orgasmic. Yet this was a friend's sister. For all the torment I'd caused, I certainly intended no harm. <laughs> okay. You you go around chasing her with the intent to frighten her and frighten her silly, and you say that that's not you intending any harm whatsoever. You have a very strange definition of of harm. An inconsistent one. The perceived threat I represented just spawned such panic and horror within her heart I couldn't help myself. Thinking back upon it still makes me smile. Well, to be fair, she and I had every reason in the world at that point to think that you would do something nasty if we allowed ourselves to be caught by you. I swear, it feels like there's another me slowly and steadily awakening within. Darkening influence, perhaps? No, this isn't right. This isn't who I am. Could it be that this nightmarish location is messing with my head? Yeah, I guess that is a possibility, isn't it? That your questionable actions all throughout Blood Cupboard might have been just you being influenced by darkening. Guess I should have thought of that possibility. Indeed, this wouldn't do at all. If I were to return to the real world with Mayu and the others without first discarding this new me, I would no longer be able to live the way I did before. ハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハハ
多分私は、貧血か何かで気を失ってしまったんだと思う。Some fellow student council members and classmates and I all did that weird ritual, and then I passed out. I thought maybe it was anemia or something. But when I woke up, I found myself in this thoroughly disturbing place. And my friends were nowhere to be found. トウコたちのいたずらだと思ったんだけど、どうもそんな雰囲気じゃない。At first, I thought maybe this was just Toko playing a prank on me. But I quickly realized it, that it went far beyond that. 怒っても、叫んでも、さすがに怖くなって、もうやめてと頼んでも、誰一人現れない。I got angry. I screamed. I cowered in fear and begged anyone who could hear me to stop doing this. But ultimately, I was just talking to air. This all felt like a bad dream. And I prayed, in my heart of hearts, that that's all it was. Because I knew I wouldn't be able to stand being in this horrible place all alone. I just wanted to see someone, to be with someone. I just want someone to call my name. I'm Mitsuki Yama Yamamoto, an 11th grader at Byakudan Senior High School. I serve as clerk for the student council. I'm right here, everyone. Right here. You know, I, I've been noticing more and more as I've been continuing to play here that each version of Heavenly Host that I've been、uh, finding myself in throughout this game doesn't really look. Visually distinct from each other in any way compared to what we've seen in Blood Covered from the different different shades of colors and tones to all the walls and floors to even the layout. even I mean, yeah, some of the rooms change layout here and there, but otherwise, there's really nothing here to distinguish the different planes that I've probably been finding myself in up till now. And I kind of missed that, honestly. Strangely enough. A decaying human head has been forcibly crammed in,、uh, into the top left cuppy. It must have been. It must have. Mustn't have been easy to make it fit, as there are tiny pieces of flesh and scalp tissue all along the frame. <laughs> Who would have done something like this? だんだん怖くなくなってきた。最初は我慢できずに吐いてたのに。You know? みんな、無事だよね。You know, when I saw my first body here, I couldn't stop throwing up. But I think I'm starting to get desensitized. I just hope the others are okay. Well, if you're going to be stuck dealing with a constant string of, ho string of horrors for a while, better to get to be desensitized than just. Reacting horribly to every little thing that you see. There are numerous indoor use slippers stowed in the cubbies. They appear much more old fashioned than the ones commonly worn in modern elementary schools. The door is frozen in place, as if it's just a decoration on the wall. It doesn't even rattle when pushed. Damn it, the windows were the same way. What the hell is going on in here? Hmm. I would have thought that looking at that head would have brought your darkening up. I'm not going to accomplish anything by staying in one place. I need to keep looking for my friends. 
Um, okay, I guess we're going to the second floor now, or are we, uh, switching to a different... Never mind, we're not switching to a different character's perspective. And, well, the hallway here in this location certainly looks a bit different as far as colors and tone is concerned. And I was just ta and I was just simply mentioning just a minute ago here about how I haven't been noticing any differences like this here in the different planes of Heavenly Host. Mitsuki-san! Mitsuki! Tare! <laughs> Who's there? Ore da yo, Kurosaki. It's me, Kurosaki. Kurosaki? Kurosaki? Toko? Kurosaki, where are you? Oh. If Kurosaki and is if Kurosaki is here, then oh shit. Is Kizumi getting me in this chapter? I need to be ready to. R I think I need to be ready to run for the hills, at, at literally any time. In that case, we were in the same hallway, but separated by a huge hole in the floor. Still, I'd finally found someone. Kensuke Kurosaki, a classmate of mine from 2-4. After being alone in here all this time, finally, a friend. I could barely contain my exuberance. Kurosaki! Hey, Kurosaki! You're looking fine and dandy when H in HD CG artwork. Well, I guess not CG artwork, but character sprite portrait artwork. But whatever, you look a lot better than you did in my cover, my let's play of Blood Covered Repeated Fear. A lot less pixely. Kurosaki, I'm so glad you're all right. You too. Are you holding up? You're not hurt or anything, right? No, I'm just fine. How about you, Kurosaki? Where are the others? I don't know. I wish I knew. I only just woke up, and I'm still trying to figure out how I got here. Okay, so this is it takes place, I guess, around the time that your group arrives here for the first time. No kidding. We were all in the student council room, right? So how come we're in a rundown school now? Did someone carry us here while we were unconscious? That's the only explanation I can think of. But I can't imagine anyone actually doing that. Yeah, they have to be pretty sick. But then, well, have you seen what's in here with us, Kurosaki? The dead bodies? Yeah. First time in my life I've ever seen the real deal. I was about ready to piss my pants when I realized what I was looking at. Ew, come on. I'm serious. This place is so not safe. We need to find Kizumi, Fukuroi, and the others and get the hell out of here. Kurosaki carefully inched closer to the hole in the corridor, bit by bit, then took a good long look inside. You could leap right over that, I'll bet. I mean, you're in the baseball club and you're good at sports. So something like this should be no problem. There's no way! 
I'd have to be a track star to clear that. Well, you'll never be on that kind of attitude. Well, this is exactly isn't the best place to practice being a track star, Mitsuki. I mean, Seiko tried. I mean, Seiko. I mean, Seiko all the way back in, in chapter one decided it'd be a good idea to run to run as fast as her legs could carry her in a place like this, and she ended up getting beheaded for her troubles. I'm kind of half joking, but I'm also kind of not. But. Yeah, it's just... My, my point is... You need to just treat this place as though literally just any random splinter of wood could just suddenly pry itself from any random wall or ceiling and then just... I don't know. Launch itself into your... in your carotid artery or something or, or another. I don't know. Anything's possible in this place. Man, you don't mince words, do you? Wouldn't expect anything less of you, though. Anyway, I'm going to try and find some other way around. What? Wait! You stay there, Mitsuki. In case anyone else shows up while I'm gone. You don't need to be in such a hurry. Why don't we stay here for a little while yet? Don't leave me alone. I guess I can be kind of a pain in the ass sometimes. In class and student council meetings alike, I'm always trying to take charge. I suppose I'll have to be all docile and sweet like Emmy if I want to be treated like a lady. Have range. Damn. Right when I need it the most, too. The time display on my phone read 2909. So... Four oh nine APM? I don't know, I'm just making up a di I'm just making this shit up here. Well, that's certainly not right. Maybe it got messed up when I dropped it. Tick tock, I hear a clock. Yeah, this school definitely looks different, for sure, than the ones I've seen before. Kurosaki's taking an awfully long time. I sure will hope nothing happened to him. Oi! Hey! Anybody there? Kurosaki? Kurosaki? I'm here! Over here, Kurosaki! Mitsuki! Is that you? Fukuroi! Hey there, you! Still enjoying your visual novels? Thank goodness. Hell's looking all over for you, Mitsuki. Actually, no, I think that was your friend that was two of your friends that enjoyed them, while you were just very reluctant to uh, join in. It was Ma it was it was Masato Fukuroi, a classmate of mine and a student council president. He always had a scowl on his face and dug his heels into the ground on everything. But right now, his cold obstinance was as welcome as could be. Fukuroi, I'm so glad you're all you're all right. Wait, 
Wasn't that exactly the same thing I said to Kurosaki? I really need to get some new material. Who cares if it's if it's the same old material? I mean, it's this. I mean, it's the same kind of sentiment either way, no matter how you phrase it. So, stick to what works. I'm sorry. You caught me right as I was starting to panic. I mean, we're in this horrible place, and Kurosaki wandered off. Slow down. This isn't like you, Mitsuki. Are you saying Kinsuke is here too? Yeah, he was on the other side of that pit. And since he couldn't figure out how to cross it, he just ran off to find an alternate way around. I see. Jumping the gun is always then. Have you found anyone else, Fukuroi? Oh, Kizami. Ah, crap. Sorry. What about Toko? I'm afraid not. Ah, Okawa or Kizami or Katayama either, and no Kizami. Well, Kizami's probably fine by himself. Mana. Hmm. You might be right. He's strong in body and strong of will. I doubt even a place like this could bring him down. Quite the opposite. In fact, I think in fact this place seems to seems to pretty much free the beast inside himself. At any rate, once we've reunited with Kurosaki. We should make finding the others our first priority. Maybe we should try to find an alternate route around this pit ourselves then. Is that really such a good idea though? What if Kurosaki gets here after we've already left? Then, then he'll wait for us. And if we set about finding our own route, there's a good chance we'll run into him along the way. And we might happen upon the others, too. You're right. We can't just stand around or we'll never get anywhere. And I have to admit, I am worried about Toko and the others. Ah. Me too. We have to confirm the safety of everyone from Byakudan as soon as possible. The door to the art room is locked up tight. Okay, so... We, uh... are playing some of the Byakudan group then. Huh. I kind of figured that the pit was down south rather than north. Doors locked. Okay, let's head south. See what we can find. Even though uh, Corpse Party Blood Covered is is available on P on PC in its entirety. And I'm able to pretty much change the game resolution and artwork to artwork resolution to any kind of setting I damn well please, all the way up to 1080p and such. I do hope that maybe one day that Xseed or Team Gris Gris or whoever could uh, make a uh, PC port of uh, Blood Covered Repeated Fear, a game I played on uh, the 3DS emulator. Because it would be nice to uh, play the, be able to play that game on PC with uh, all the fancy resolution options and, up, and uh, updated and upscaled artwork and such. I'm sure it would look very nice on uh, PC. I doubt that's gonna. I doubt that would happen anytime soon, though. So. May have to wait for quite a while before 
Something like that could possibly happen. Wait, I'm just now noticing. I'm in the second wing of Heavenly Host. Maybe that's why the school looks a bit different. Because I haven't been in the second wing yet in this game. The first things I noticed when entering the, the room were a stack of candles and a box of matches right in front of my eyes. Has someone left these behind? These look fine. As long as they're not too damp, they should still be pretty usable. Come on, flame. I struck one of the matches along the side of the box. And a small red flame flickered into being. I propped up one of the loose candles and placed a burning match head against its wick. It may not be much, but hopefully if someone comes into this room and sees this candle, they'll know there are living beings in here with, with them. I have a feeling that with one of the wrong ends I'm gonna need I'm gonna need to uh, unlock with this chapter is going to involve me not coming in here and lighting this candle. I could almost I would almost bet money on it. I decided it would be best to take the remaining candles and the box of matches with us, just in case we needed them. That and acquiring them too. It's one of the candles we found in this room. The seal must be undone. This tragedy must not be allowed to spread any farther. What seal? What's being sealed? There are words scrawled above the portraits on the wall. It wasn't an accident. It was suicide. The school covered it up. Whose accident are we talking about exactly? Or, or sorry, suicide. Oh, I see. We got something over there, but I'll check this stuff out first. There's a row of awards and plaques on one of the shelves here. Among them sits a small, rectangular box. What could this be? Let's take it. The cabinet's glass door is locked. Um, okay. So I guess I can't... I guess I can't really do anything with that just yet. Fukuroi, look! There's something in there! Something small was firmly jammed between two of the keys on the piano. It seemed to have been wedged in with tremendous force, making it impossible to move either the surrounding keys. Yeah, there's definitely something there. But I don't think we'll be getting it out anytime soon. We needed something we could fit in the tiny space between the keys in order to pop it out. Well, I doubt pliers are going to work, so... Hi, who are you? It's a comparatively fresh corpse. Based on size and uniform, it looks to be the body of a female junior high school student. Her throat seems to have been torn out, resulting in copious amounts of blood not only on her uniform, but pooled along the floor as well. Her mouth, too, is hanging, is hanging agape, and she has no tongue. What was used to cut her apart like this? Her student ID is bloody, but still legible. Koyo Girls Academy Middle School. Haruna Harukaze. Wow, you don't 
take you don't take any influence of darkening from looking at corpse either at corpses either. Oh Yoshiki, I might have found your true love. A memo pad, presumably belonging to the deceased girl, is lying on the ground near her body. It looks like she was using it to chronicle her experiences here in the school building. The letters are written in pink ink and are easily legible. I did the Sachiko ritual with Nazumi and the others. And then, all of a sudden, I was out like a light. When I came to, I was here, surrounded by corpses. I can't even say how many times I vomited. I want to go home. We three have to stick together. If we don't, I think we're as good as dead. Like that high school student we met yesterday. There's nothing to lef left to eat in here. I think we've been here a week now. But it's hard to say for sure. I really want to take a bath. And brush my teeth, too. The three of us talked it over and decided to eat that dead body. It was tough and bloody and felt and tasted so, so wrong. Rena soldiered through, but Nazumi threw it up. He came again. Who, hammer time? Nazumi was injured. Now she'll just get in our way. Rena was crying. But I'm just hungry. Nazumi's not coming. I think she's been killed already. Oh well. If Rena comes, I know what I have to do. Wait a minute. Is this actually a victim's memoir that I just read? then it likely would not be a good idea for me to read this thing to completion, then, would it? Yeah, okay, that looked exactly the same. I don't think there's anything else in here I can look at, so I'm gonna go ahead and move forward. It's a rather heavily decayed corpse. Based on the size and uniform, it looks to be the body of a female junior or senior high school student. Her head has been smashed flat as if with a press, and everything that would normally be tucked away in her skull is now lying exposed on the hallway floor. Her student ID can be found amongst this viscera. Koyo Girls is Academy Middle School. Nazumi Mitaka. Hello, Nazumi. My friend seemed to get a little unhinged. There's a piece of scrap paper on the floor near the body. It seems to have been torn out of a larger memo pad. Several lines are written on it with pink ink. Yeah, I think this is definitely a mem victim's memoir. I found something we can eat. I've noted its location on this map. Please come as soon as you see this. There's still hope for us. Let's stave off death as long as possible. Together! There's a hand-drawn map at the bottom of the page, with a big circle on it. The circle is labeled Staff Room. And the area indicates seems to be 
right at the end of this very hallway. Anything else? Doesn't look like that. Hmm. Do I want to go to the staff room right away, or do I want to check this stuff out first? I'm feeling a little cautious of the staff room, so I think I'll head west first. Death traps I'm gonna run into in this place. Whatever they are, I doubt it'll involve pink piano wire. Okay, we were already here. So, let's go here. So, there is a boys' laboratory, and yet no girls. Odd. The, bur the boys' the room entrance is completely boarded up. There's no way to get inside right now. Hey, you're a blue one. You must be friendly, yeah? The boys' room, okay... Hi. It's a thoroughly decomposed corpse. Based on size and uniform, it looks to be the body of a male junior or senior high school student. There's a student ID name tag on his blazer. Rubens Academy Senior High School. Koichi uh, Kanisada. Yeah, you really don't take any darkening influence from corpses. Do you know what lies beneath this school? Well, a corpse lake, essentially. Or a corpse pool. It's a mire of agony and torment that can drive a man to madness with a single touch. Yeah, sounds pretty accurate. It's a halfway decomposed corpse. Based on size and uniform, it looks to be the body of a male junior or senior high school student. His name tag seems to have survived intact. Rubens Academy Senior High School. Taka Taiga. I watched Toradora recently, and now I can't hear the name Taiga without thinking of, well, the Palm Taiga. Good going, Toradora. You've thoroughly... You thoroughly met, succeeded in uh, getting me to associate a name with a specific character. And nothing else. The door to the staff room is completely locked up tight. Well, shit. Looks like we won't be going to the staff room after all. Oh, well. What's your story? There's a corpse here that almost seems to be resting against the wall. Or perhaps it was propped up post-mortem. It looks to be the remains of a male senior high school student. His wrists and ankles are bound with wire, and there also appear to be copious amounts of wire around his neck. His name tag reads, Kurashiki Industrial High School, Masuro Nijino. Is that a ghost? Well, I guess we were supposed to see this ghost first, uh, than, rather than the other one in that, in, down the hall. Is that a ghost? 
Like for real? Crap, this isn't good. My legs are shaking. You're still alive, aren't you? If you don't want to ch that to change anytime soon, then take my advice. Trust no one. Your advice is your advice would make sense if this were the X Files, but since it's not, it's only mostly useful. Not a single person. In that case, I, why should I trust you then? Seriously. Think this through. Okay, I don't think there's anything else here, so let's head up to the second floor again, but from this direction. Well, we definitely can't go up to the third floor. The stairwell is packed tightly with desks. It won't be possible to get up to the third floor from here. Truly unfortunate. Well, I found the girls' room. It's all the way up on the second floor. I don't know, that just seems kind of like an inconvenient way to uh, place restrooms throughout a building. Have like one, r have one room set on one floor and then have to have another one set on another floor. Like, wouldn't it just be more convenient just to have them like right next to each other or something? Like most places do. Not that it really is going to matter in this case, because this bathroom is a sealed. Wait, is that what those pictures earlier were referring to? This seal? The girls' bathroom entrance is covered in protective charms and seems to be shut up tight. It looks like it, it looks like something is written here, but the lettering is so faint as to be eligible. The atmosphere feels heavier here than it does anywhere else. And the door is covered in protective charms. It seems to be shut up tight. It's not even locked. It just won't open. Shinto seals? I don't like the looks of that. It's no more disconcerting than anything else in this godforsaken building, really. Fair point. Well, it's not like we can get in there to investigate anyway, so I guess it doesn't really matter. I don't know, there's gotta be a way I can open this thing. Looks like my final destination is the reference room here. Uh-oh. We got an orange bastard here. It's a thoroughly decomposed corpse. Looks to be a male junior high school student, except he's got no head. His name tag reads Kurashiki Industrial High School, Akira Yutsuka. Somebody stole my head. Give it back. Maybe I can be some help to you if you do. What should we do? Good question. 
これ以上ない証拠を目の当たりにしてしまった。Good question. I never did believe in the paranormal before. But after everything we've seen in here, I don't think I can be skeptical any longer. じゃなくて、この人の頼み聞くかってこと。That's not what I mean. I'm asking if we should help this person if his problem or not. どうしよう。I'm... 私たちも友達探してるけど、この人も困ってるみたい。I am very... Very unsure if it, that's a, a good idea here because, well, he's an orange bastard. Orange bas helping out orange bastards tends to not go well for me. What do we do? We need to find our friends. But this poor soul has it a lot worse than we do. I guess it is possible that I'm, now, now that I'm remembering a certain orange, ba orange bastard from、uh, Blood Covered that gave Miss Yui a hard time. I'm now remembering that it is possible to appease these guys a little bit, but not. But that was just like the one exception to the general rule back in Blood Covered. So I don't know if it would apply here either. So. My gut, my gut instinct is telling me that I should probably not help him. But I can't exactly ignore the fact that it might benefit me in the long term, too, as risky as it may be. I'm gonna not help him. No. We're just students. As much as I'd like to help him, I really don't think there's anything we can do. But Mitsuki. We can't. We don't even know what's going to happen to us in here. We just can't. I guess. You're right. We should focus our energy on finding Kensuke and the others. ここを出たら必ず警察に連絡するから、それまで辛抱してくれ。I'm sorry. I don't think there's anything we can do for you right now. Once we get out of here, though, we'll send the police. So just sit tight until then. 待ってくれ。僕の頭を見つければ、君たちの役に立つものが。Wait, please. If you find my head, I swear I'll return the favor. Please try to find my head. It can't hurt to keep an eye peeled for it.、Hmm. I hope I made the right decision here. It looks like the key from an old fashioned wind up toy. It's just an old wind up key. But what does it wind up? It looks like it's about the right size for a toy, but in this place, you never really know. We might as well take it with us then. We may come across whatever it attaches to at some point. I really hope I made the right decision with this orange bastard here. Goodbye, bastard. If I find your head, I will be sure to at least make note of it. Hi, who are you? It's a comparatively fresh corpse. Based on size and uniform, it looks to be the body of a female junior high school student. The expression on her face is almost joyous. Unfortunately, her student ID is clearly legible. Koyo Girls is Academy Middle School. Rina Misato. Well, we found Rina. There's a piece of scrap paper on the floor near the body. It seems to have been torn out of a larger memo pad. 
Several lines are written on it with pink ink. We left a note for Nazumi, telling her to come to the staff room. There's no turning back now. But I shouldn't feel sorry for her. Without food, all three of us will die. And Nazumi's injured, so she'd never be able to get away from that man. Yeah. Poor Nazumi. The story of Princess. Yeah, the, the Horton Sia Princess, excuse me, with black dress and white shoes. Favors glass houses. No men in the in the ristorante, please. Some kind of clue to a puzzle. I mean, that's my guess. Alright, we're almost there. Right at the reference room. I have no idea what we'll find there, but hopefully it's nothing too bad. Well, I found a bucket. The door and window alike are frozen in place, as if they're just decorations on the wall. Nothing even rattles when pushed. Okay, so this place is sealed too. Where am I supposed to go then? It looks like it looks to be a bucket, probably used by the custodian for mopping the floors. There's nothing inside. Hmm. I guess maybe I should just look around and see if I can find a key item somewhere. Either that or find what that little wind-up key goes to. Could it be the one in the exit? Have been easy to make it fit as there are tiny pieces of flesh and scalp tissue along the frame all along the frame frame. The only standout injury is to the jaw, which is clearly smashed in, giving the face an eerie unnatural expression. Based on lust left of its facial features and the cut of its hair, this is likely a male middle school student. Looking closely, something seems to have been shoved into his, his mouth. Look, there's something in there. Let's check it out. I can definitely see something in his mouth, but I don't think I can, you know. Allow me. Definitely not a fan of maggots crawling all over me. Maggots sure love to nest everywhere that it everywhere that is as gross as possible, huh? Fukuroi dug around inside the mouth of the severed head for a few moments, then finally withdrew his hand. 
Chris gripping something tightly between his now foul-smelling, discolored, and dully glistening fingers. Hi, tissues got that. Here, I've got tissues. Ah, tasukaru. Ah, thank you. Seems to be a key of some sort. Hmm, looks like a club. Like from uh, like from playing cards. A club key. Perhaps a subtle shout out to Resident Evil 2, perhaps? After thoroughly wiping off all the maggots and bits of rind flesh, the item Fukuroi produced from the head took on that classic look of an old copper key. I want to do. I want to do a let's play of the Resident, Resident Evil 2 remake at some point, but I don't know when I'll be able to get my hands on a copy of the game, or even exactly which version of the game I want to emulate when, or emulate or capture footage from when I do. Because while I can get easy access to uh, the PC version, I really don't want to deal with uh, that with uh, de novo uh, crapware that's in it. So I don't know. Can I at least take this head? But if I can get a capture device, then I do have a PlayStation Four. So I can can probably just no wait. I don't remember. Does is there censorship going on for Resident Evil 2 on the PS4? If there is, then I definitely can't play that version. I don't want to deal with that crap. Okay, so maybe the staff room. Let's try here first. I wonder if that key we found will work here. Nope. Wrong door, I guess. Well, I'm, I'm gonna need a I'm gonna need a lot more than a key in order to uh, get into the boys' room. So it's gotta be on one so it's gotta be on one of the doors here in the second floor. But anyway, I'll find, I'll figure out what I want, what I want to do with the Resident Evil 2 remake at some point in the future. Rest assured of that. It just might take a while. Not that I expect it to work on this, but I might as well check, just to be sure. Nope. It's got to be this door, then. Or there's the art room, too, I suppose. Yeah, that's right. This thing was frozen in place. Wait a minute. I don't see a pit. So... Why is it not allowing me to go forward then? Odd. I guess this might be another instance of misplaced artwork in the game's environment. Oh well, it's not that far trip, so it only take me just a minute here just to go the other way.
キの鍵で開けられないかな Better work here, cause I don't know where else I could use this damn thing. There we go. All right, it's a match. Well, let's go inside. Door is unlocked. Hmm, I'm not seeing. That art, that、uh, art piece with the scary-looking face on here. Maybe it wasn't made yet. There's a plaster model of a human arm on one of the shelves. Maybe it was used for sketching. The fingers are all stained red, as if covered in blood. What is this? The hell is this? That doesn't look like paint, does it? No, it does not. It's a still life depicting hydr.、Uh, hydr. If I could just speak. Hydrangeas? There's a palette knife placed between the canvas. Hey, I could probably use that for the piano. This seems like something we might be able to use. You never know when something like this might come in handy. Acquired palette knife. It's a portrait of a girl with long black hair. Okay, so it's just on the up.、Uh, it's just turned around. But her face has been completely blotted out with red paint. It's faint and almost invisible from a distance. But there appears to be a painting of a white rose on this canvas. Or maybe just a water stain. I don't know, I don't see shit. There are quite a lot of objects on these shelves and in these drawers, but every one of them is fixed in place, as if they're all just decorative accents. What's that? I know some faintest color in here. What's going on? Why is it so. Cold. I got a bad feeling about this. We should get away from here. You're probably right. I don't see anything else. So let's head right back down to the music room and get whatever the hell is stuck in that piano. All right, let's get it. Fukuroi, look. Fukuroi, look. There's someone in there. This is a wedge of tremendous force. Tashkani, Nani Karuga. Hey, what about that? Hey, what about that palette knife we found in the art room? Well, let's try it. Fukuroi took the palette knife in hand and started digging between the keys of the piano with it in an attempt to dislodge whatever was stuck. It took a lot more effort than expected and created an unpleasant scraping sound that kind of hurt my ears. But ultimately. Alright, I've got it. It's a key. Totally different shape and size than the one we used to open the art room, too. Fukuroi handed me a small key, which I immediately pocketed. Well, that's nice. I think I know just where I need to use it, too. It's piano, and by all appearances, it should still play just fine. Alright, let's just go up here. No. Yeah, the reference. No, wait, that's the blocked off one, I think. The staff room is the one I need to go to. Really? No, 
things I can use these different keys for, so there's got to be something close by I can use. Wait a minute. Maybe I know just what I need, where I need to take this. Get back there. Yeah, there's a lot of cabinet in one of these rooms. I think it was... The music room? And it was just there, too. Alright, let's see what's in here. There's a row of awards and plaques on one of the shelves. Let's try using the key we found in the piano. The key turned without any resistance, and the heavy glass door opened right up. I removed the rectangular box from inside, and marveled at the feel of the wood. It was made of... of Paloina. Uh, Palo... Paloina. Paloina. Why, why am I having trouble... Speaking that word. Palo, palo nia. There, there we go. Making it smooth and lightweight. Let's have a look inside, shall we? Doesn't seem dangerous or anything. Hope you didn't just jinx us. Shinpai I wouldn't worry. Even if there's a bomb in there, I'm sure you'd be able to handle it just fine. Is, uh, is, uh, is she a bomb expert? Is, does she got some kind of hidden talent here that I should be made aware of? <laughs> Isn't that supposed to be the girls' line? I couldn't believe I just laughed. I guess Fukuroi's overtly serious deadpan reactions had become a source of strength for me. I can't even describe how grateful I was just to have him there. He was like a pillar of strength. With that in mind, I fiercely opened the, the Palo, Palo Nia box. Inside, wrapped in silk, was a small wooden board inked with cali cal calligraphy. Or calligraphy? You know, I'm wondering, should I use that on the girls' bathroom up on the second floor? What's this? It looks like the kind of thing you'd see at somebody's grave. That's exactly what it is. It's a wooden grave tag. A kind of protective charm. It's the sort of thing they burn at Buddhist setter stick ceremonies. You learn something new every day. I wasn't particularly well versed in Buddhist practices, but in a place like this, any sort of protective charm seemed like a good item to have. You won't get any arguments from me on that. Yeah, well, why? Well, I'm pretty sure I have a fairly good idea of where to use this thing. I think I'm going to uh, save that along with exploring more of uh, the second wing of the school for the next episode. I'm just going to go ahead and cut things off here. So, I hope that you guys enjoyed this uh, latest episode of Corpse Party Book of Shadows. If you did and you want to see more content from me, then feel free to subscribe to my channel. I'm quite curious to see what will happen once we uh, open that door to the restroom. I doubt it'll be anything pleasant, though. But who knows? Maybe there'll be a birthday cake for for uh, somebody in there that we could take a slice of. Unless the cake is a lie. 
Anyway, I will uh, see you guys next time. Take care.